Hey, what's up YouTube? Today we are doing a Hamilton watch review. This is the Hamilton Khaki King Automatic, reference H644-55533. Uh, this is the Hamilton Khaki King on the brown leather strap, as you can see here, with contrast stitching. Uh, there are a few different versions of this watch, leather strap version, um, one on a metal bracelet, and one with a different dial color. This is, of course, the black dial version, as you can see before us. This watch comes in at a price point of around, I've seen it anywhere from about $329 up towards $399, so sub $400. Uh, I think that it is worth uh, every penny. I'm a big fan of Hamilton watches, and I'm a big fan of this watch. In the past, you've probably, or maybe seen, if you haven't seen them, you should check them out. I did a review of my Hamilton Khaki Field 38mm. I also did a comparison of that watch with the Rolex Explorer. Uh, so, as, as you're probably well aware, if you've seen those videos, I do like Hamilton watches, and uh, super excited to get this watch in for review. By the way, this is on loan from a viewer, and... Uh, I appreciate the loan very, very much. Super excited to have it here. Very impressed with this watch. And I'm really glad I'm going to have the opportunity to bring this review to the table. Uh, first things first. When I was shopping around for Hamilton watches, I was on the fence about this watch. And that's why I ended up with the 38mm Khaki Field and not the Khaki King. In the pictures, it looked a little bit too big to me. You have these pronounced crown guards, obviously, like I said, 40 millimeter case. Um, did I say the dimensions yet? No, I'll go over those real quick. We have a 40 millimeter diameter case. We have 20 millimeter lugs. We have a thickness of about 11 to 12 millimeters. I couldn't really accurately measure it on my calipers. And lug to lug from the top to the bottom, uh, my calipers come in at 49 millimeters. So given those uh, dimensions and just the way that it looked in pictures, I was afraid that this might be a little bit too large for me. I prefer smaller watches in the sub 40 millimeter range. Now getting this in and comparing it to my 38 millimeter khaki field, I can say that is absolutely not too big. Actually, I think the proportions and the dimensions on it are just about perfect. And while it is a, uh, a little bit, I mean, noticeably bigger than my 38 millimeter khaki, um, it's not too big. It, it's just a little bit bigger. It works for me on my seven inch wrist. And I suspect that if anybody was looking around for this style field watch, trying to d decide between the two, I suspect if you think that the 38 millimeter would work for you, that this one would work for you as well. Now, basic specifications about this watch. Of course, it runs on Hamilton's Caliber H40 automatic movement. We have a sapphire crystal. Not, um, There is no anti-reflective coating. So as I pan it towards my studio lights, you can see we get quite a bit of glare there. Uh, it can be a mild problem. You can see my ceiling fan probably reflecting my camera. If you're out in daylight, direct sunlight, it, it can be a a little bit of a problem if I'm being honest. It's the same issue that I have with my Khaki Field 38 millimeter. It's a nice crystal, it's scratch resistant. Um, in the right light, it looks very good. In the wrong light in, or in bright light, it is very reflective. Uh, on the back side, we do have an exhibition case back. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a sapphire crystal or just a mineral crystal. Uh, probably mineral crystal if I had to guess, but uh, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, we do have loom on the handset, on the indices, and if we get in uh, real close on the dial here, on the outer chapter ring, there's little pips at every five, every five seconds. Uh, those are loomed as well. Uh, we have, obviously, uh, a day and date complication up at the 12 o'clock position, and uh, five bar or 50 meters of water resist. Now here's something a little curious. This watch, again, is 50 meters of water resistance. On the other hand, my, my 38 millimeter khaki field, which uh, we'll stand in and we'll talk about some comparisons from time to time throughout the course of this review. The water resist on this 38 millimeter Hamilton is 100 meters or 10 bar. Why they opted to do 
only uh, 50 meters of water resist on the Hamilton Khaki King, but 100 meters on the field watch. I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. It was a surprise when I found that out, but I wanted to point that out. I don't think a lot of people are awfully worried about the water resist of their watches. They probably rarely get them wet, but if you're one of the people that is concerned about that, keep in mind that the standard Khaki Field line has a better water resistance rating than the Khaki King. We'll slide him off the table and continue along talking about this watch for now, though. Um, let's talk about the movement briefly. Again, it's the Caliber H40 movement, which is based off of an ETA movement. At some point in the last year or so, maybe the last two years, Hamilton modified a standard ETA movement uh, to create their H series of movements. Some of the modifications they made was dropping the beat rate or vibrations per hour down from 28,800 to 21,600. In doing that, what they did was increase the power reserve significantly from around 40 hours up to an 80-hour power reserve. Uh, there was some other things that probably contribute to that, like maybe the mainspring being a different material. I'm not entirely sure, but in dropping that um, beat rate of 28.8 down to 21.6 and some other modifications, again, we have an 80-hour power reserve now. In my previous review of that Hamilton Khaki Field 38mm, we discussed the movement in depth, and a lot of the people commented. Some said, I prefer the 80-hour power reserve. Some said, I don't care about that long power reserve. I would much rather have the 28,800 beats per hour. Here's my opinion on that. Looking at the second hand of this watch, or any watch that runs a 21.6, I can barely tell the difference between that and a watch that runs at 28.8. I mean, I had the Rolex Explorer, and I could set that side by side with my Hamilton. And yeah, I could see the difference. It was not, though, as if it were indistinguishable, but it was very difficult to notice the difference. I think the average person probably wouldn't if you handed it to him. It's just not, an, it's a non-issue for me. I would rather have the power reserve if... If, if I had a choice, I guess, uh, is what I'm getting at. You're entitled to your opinion. I mean, power reserves greater than 40 hours probably aren't really all that necessary either, so personal taste and whatnot. Uh, last but not least in discussing the movement, we can talk about the accuracy. On Hamilton's website in the FAQ section, they say that you should expect to get an accuracy on their H-series movements of something along the lines of minus 10 seconds per day to plus 15 seconds per day. Now, so far in my experience, the accuracy on my Hamilton watches has been exceptional, including, I think, this one. This one I haven't worn a lot, and the type of accuracy you're going to achieve is going to differ quite a bit if it's just wound up and running, you know, sitting on your desk like this, dial up, it's not going to keep the same kind of time as it would as if it were on your arm or your wrist or whatever for 10 or 12 or 16 hours a day. You're going to get different results. Why I bring that up is because I haven't worn this watch. It's, it's again, a loner, and I've worn it a little bit around the house, but I haven't worn it all day long for, for days and days and really judged the accuracy. But just sitting dial up on my desk and a little bit of wear, it probably, it appears to only gain a few seconds per day. On the other hand, my Hamilton Khaki Field 38mm, which I do wear very extensively, it is supremely accurate. It, it, it runs, uh, you know, I can't remember if it's a little bit fast or a little bit slow, actually. But when I was, you know, when I first got it and I was keeping track of it sort of religiously, uh, it was just either gaining or losing two seconds per day. I forget which. I think it's gaining about two seconds per day. Just incredibly, incredibly accurate. So my point is my experience with these uh, new Hamilton H-series movements, they are very accurate, much more accurate than even the suggested specifications on the Hamilton website of negative 10 to plus 15. I did have a third khaki field 38 millimeter that was not as accurate as either of these two. But it was still good enough. It was around, I want to say, plus 7 or plus 8 seconds per day. So, you know, well within tolerances, pretty good accuracy. But this uh, Khaki Field, my most current one, and this Khaki King that's on loan here, both very, very accurate. Quite impressed with whatever it was that they did to 
to uh, improve the accuracy of their watches. Not to, not that I'm saying the accuracy of the old ETA movements weren't good. I don't know that to be true or false. Uh, but in their advertising, they do say that they made some changes to achieve something about you know su supreme accuracy. I, I forget the phrasing that they used on their marketing on the Hamilton University website. Uh, but they do mention that in creating these H-series movements, that was one of the things that they went for. So yeah, the the movement in these watches are are really good. Uh, are they gonna you know last for a long long time? Are they gonna need servicing frequently? Things of that nature. And I don't really have the knowledge or the background to discuss the robustness and the reliability of them. But as far as what I have had experience with, I'm quite impressed with them. So yeah, let's talk about now. This watch's case and well, all, all all of the design features, all of the, the the quality, you know, things of that nature. So so like I had previously mentioned, I think I was unsure about the sizing on this wristwatch, and I'm gonna bring my my 38 millimeter field khaki field in frame here. The the khaki king is 40 millimeters in diameter. The khaki field is 38 millimeters in diameter. The lug widths are the same at 20. The thicknesses are the same at about 11 millimeters. The only other dimension that differs is the lug to lug from top to bottom. We have 49 millimeters on the Khaki King, and we have 47 millimeters on the field. When I was shopping around for, for Hamilton watches, I liked both of these, but I was a little afraid of the larger size of the Khaki King, so I avoided it, and that's why I went with the 38 millimeter. I love the 38 millimeter. I love the dimensions, everything about it. Uh, but in getting this Khaki King on loan, I can tell you that I love that one too now. And it's not that I regret having gotten the 38 millimeter, but I definitely, had I decided to go the other way and gone with the Khaki King, I would not have regretted that either. The size and the proportion, the it, proportions, the dimensions, it all works just as well for me on my 7 inch wrist. I would be perfectly happy with either one of these watches, the size differences are negligible once it comes to how it presents on the writ, uh, on the wrist in my opinion for me you may or may you know disagree agree whatever but but for me i would not have been disappointed with either one of these watches having now had some time with this khaki king i really like it quite a bit so i suppose what i'm getting at is if you're shopping around and maybe you're leaning one way or the other maybe you're saying to yourself the 40 millimeter might be too large like i had originally I just don't find that to be the case now. I, I would be really happy either way. Now, when we talk about the the quality of this watch, first thing I want to do is talk about the case. Uh, we have a really nice brushed finish. Probably one of the nicer brushed finishes on an affordable watch that I have seen. I mean, the brushing on high-end luxury watches is, of course, out of this world. But when we're talking about sub $500, sub $400 watches, I don't think that I've really seen any that have brushing as good as this watch. Uh, not to say that it's not out there, I just don't have any experience with it. So, so yeah, very impressed with the brushing. The only place that has any sort of polishing on this watch is the bezel. And of course it's covered in fingerprints, so it's going to be difficult to see the polishing. I'll give it a little bit of a wipe. But the smooth bezel does have a very nice, bright, almost mirrored polish finish. It looks quite good. It's sort of funny, I guess. These are, you know, military style field watches. Uh, brushed finishes are sort of superfluous on that style of watch, but I like it. I think it gives it a, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a touch of class. It dresses it up a bit. The, uh, yeah, so you know the bezel is great on both of them, both of those watch my mine and this and this loaner watch. Now the other interesting feature about the case here is we have these very pronounced crown guards and sort of a little um, short, I guess is the way I would describe it, crown. And the reason I bring that up is because on the khaki field, the 38 millimeter version, you can see the crown is quite a bit bigger. But of course, there's no crown guards. I kind of wish that I had this small crown on my khaki field watch. I feel like the crown on, on the khaki field is just too oversized for the watch. It's not a make or break deal for me, but I do like the crown on this khaki king better. 
The crown guards do make it a little bit difficult to get your hand on the crown to manually wind it. Of course, this is a manual, mind, manual wind movement, and the movement does hack. I think I forgot to mention that, but it's probably obvious to most people. So when you're wanting to manually wind this movement, getting your hand on that crown to give it some winds, it's a little bit more difficult just because of those crown guards there. It's not like it's undoable. It's not like a problem. I just want to point it out that well, it's kind of a combination of the, the texturing on the crown is a little slick, not very rough. And, uh, and these crown guards and the small size of the crown, all of those factors together, does make manipulating the crown to, to hand wind a little bit challenging. Um, the crown is uh, otherwise signed with the Hamilton H, as you can see there. A nice feature, I guess. I'm not crazy about crowns being signed or not signed. It's more or less a non-issue for me. But I know some people care about that, so it is signed with the H if, if you're one of the people that does care about that sort of thing. Um, moving along, we'll talk about the dial, I suppose. I love field watch dials. Uh, you know, we have the, going from the outside to the inside, we have the very precise chapter ring with pips on the outer edge, and then the seconds 5, 10, 15, 20 going all the way around. I think that that chapter ring design looks excellent. If we move into the next edge or layer of the dial, you can see we have the 1 through 12 Arabics. Of course, there's no actual 12 Arabic numeral because we have a day and date complication up there at the 12 o'clock position. That section of the dial, though, and I'll try to show it to you, it's got a different texture, a different kind of finish than the rest of the dial. It looks nice. I like it. And when you're looking down at the watch, you see all of these different layers and textures going on, and it looks cool. The next ring in, we have a 24-hour scale, 13 through 24. And, and then finally, we have the Hamilton branding, 12 o'clock position, khaki automatic at the 6 o'clock position. The handset is uh, excellent, with one exception. And this isn't really a problem, it's just a personal taste thing. I'll bring in the khaki field. If we look at the second hands, we can see that on the khaki field on the right, the tip is... Uh, painted with a highlight of red, whereas on the Khaki King, it is highlighted with just white. I prefer the red tip. I think it looks a little bit nicer, but not a big deal. Just wanted to point that out. Um, if you guys are looking around, uh, you know, maybe you didn't notice that because it's not super obvious and super apparent. Now, the little pips on the outer chapter ring, the main Arabic indices, the 1 through 11, and the handset are all loomed. But, and there's a but there, the loom on this watch is really not very good. The loom on my 38 millimeter khaki field is also not very good. I guess it works, but when you give it a full charge using you know a bright flashlight, it fades very, very quickly. And if you try to read the watch in the dark, hours and hours after dark, very difficult to see the loom. It does shine, but given my very bad eyesight, on top of the fact that it's not particularly bright, it's more or less illegible to me. If you had very good eyesight, maybe it would be less of an issue for you. But for me, it's definitely not bright enough. It's certainly not Seiko loom, that's for sure. Uh, another thing about the dial, of course, I had already briefly mentioned, we have the day and date complication up at the 12 o'clock position. But something cool about it, and uh, I'm going to show you, and of course when we pull the crown all the way out, the movement does hack. So we'll uh, you know, kind of pretend that time is going by, and I want to show you that with the level of precision that the day and date flips at about 12 o'clock. So we're moving around to 10 o'clock, moving around to 11 o'clock, and just watch that day and date flip as we come up to 12 o'clock. It's very quick and very precise, bang, just a little before 12. I don't know if you saw how fast that flipped, uh, but that's pretty impressive. It's not like the Seiko watches where it takes several hours for the day and the date to go ahead and actually turn over. This flips very quickly. Uh, I like that. It's not something that you really ever get to see. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not like you're looking at the watch at 12 o'clock very often, but the fact that it does do that. I don't know. It sort of speaks to the quality, I guess, to me a little bit. 
anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. I thought that that was an interesting uh, feature or point. Um, the other thing to talk about on this guy, of course, is the strap. This comes on a very nice brown leather strap. And my original khaki field watch, I had it on a black leather strap. And I told you guys that I am a big fan of the leather that Hamilton puts their watches on. Of course, the current khaki field that I have is on a bracelet, which I like very much too. But these leather straps are great. The finish, the, 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 the quality, the, the hardware. We got a nice stainless steel brush buckle with the Hamilton logo. The keepers are very, very good. The main keeper here is sewn in, and this keeper is loose. On the back side, we have a very nice uh, lining. Uh, there's the reference number for the strap itself. And then on this side, we have the Hamilton branding. They're very good. I mean, I've only had experience with a few different brands of aftermarket leather straps, but I will tell you that this Hamilton leather strap and the one that I had on my previous khaki field blew all of the aftermarket straps that I have tried out of the water, be it Hadley Roma and a a couple of other basic or maybe even generic brands. The straps that these guys use are good quality. Uh, so yeah, if, if you decide to go with the leather instead of the bracelet, well, here's my recommendation. My recommendation is almost always to go with the watch on the bracelet because you can't get a bracelet aftermarket for most watches with the exception of some Seikos that are so wildly popular that companies make aftermarket bracelets for them specifically. But I seriously doubt that you could get an aftermarket or third party bracelet for this watch. So I really would suggest getting the bracelet if you were going to buy a khaki king or a khaki field either way and then looking into aftermarket leather or nato straps or whatever as, a, as an alternative uh, but if you decide you want to go with the leather like the one that this particular example is on it is very good quality leather and it's not like you'd be making a mistake i just think you get better value in getting your watches on a bracelet if it's a decent bracelet to begin with which these are uh, yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to talk about about this watch. I'm super impressed with it. Um, I guess, you know, one final thought, and I want to kind of talk about this one more time before we close out. Should you go with the 40 millimeter version Khaki King? Should you go with the 38 millimeter? I mean, this was a, an internal monologue that I had with myself for quite a while when I was trying to decide what I wanted to go with. So I think it's important or maybe at least worth bringing up again. They are obviously quite a bit different in dimensions. Well, not a quite a bit, but you know, two millimeters in diameter, two millimeters in lug to lug, but they present differently. If you're looking at them side by side, you know, like I said, when I was evaluating this purchase, before just based on pictures you look on this khaki you look at this khaki king and it does really present a lot differently but on the wrist it really doesn't uh feel too big to me as a matter of fact i guess i should give you guys a wrist shot i know people always ask for that i don't really like doing wrist shots i don't think that there's a lot of value in seeing what a watch looks like on my wrist all zoomed in like this but some people like it so i'll go ahead and throw it on the wrist and give you a quick look all right, so there it is. That's on my seven inch wrist. And yeah, I think it works great. I think it works just as well as the 38 millimeter version. I really do like it quite a bit. And I probably have already mentioned this, but if I had went with this one as opposed to the 38 millimeter, 38 millimeter khaki field, uh, I would be just as happy. I, I think it's a great looking watch. I think that the size and the proportions works just fine. It would probably be fine for anybody except for maybe a person with very, very small wrists, like, I don't know, six inches or, or, or something in that ballpark. If you got for sure six and a half to seven inch wrists, you're going to be just fine with either one of these watches. I think it looks great. I think the quality is, you know, very good for, for the price. And overall, I'm super impressed and really happy to have had the time with this watch. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I appreciate you tuning in. I will, as always, put links to my social media, and I'll put a link to this watch on Amazon if you're interested in picking it up, or the or the 38 millimeter. I'll put either one of those in there if you're if you're interested in picking either of them up. And of course, since it's through my affiliate account, I'll get a small commission if you do. I'd appreciate that very much. 
So yeah, I'll be back uh, a little bit later with uh, another watch review, probably later on this week. All right, guys. Bye.